Rebuilding your paradise. With a KiwiSaver manager that's invested in New Zealand, its businesses and its people. Milford, invested in you. Good evening to you, New Zealand. Great to have your company. I'm Paul Henry. What we don't need now is to be told we're facing a crisis of biblical proportions. Not because it's not the fact, but because we already know that. Will lives be distorted, possibly for generations? Yes, but like I say, we know that. What we do need now is a conversation about the possibilities. Possibilities to bounce forward, not just bounce back. It would be to sell ourselves short and betray future generations not to explore all the options. We've proved so far as a country that we can work together to thwart coronavirus. Now the bigger job, the exciting job begins, rebuilding paradise together. This excites me so much that I called a temporary halt to my retirement, which according to some tweets last week is possibly worse than the pandemic itself. Over the next four weeks we will put that theory to the test and we will look at where we might want to be as a country in 6, 12, 24 months time and how we might get there. On the show tonight, we're moving to level three next Monday night, but for the hospitality industry, we're still at least three weeks away from anything like life as normal. And that small extension to lockdown is predicted to sink a further 10% of restaurants, bars and cafes. The head of hospitality New Zealand joins me to look into the future. And overseas, the cracks in society are widening under the pressure of lockdown. We ask a behaviour expert here how much longer New Zealanders can toe the line. But we start tonight with a man who's lost it all once before. In the late 70s, disaster struck for Sir Michael Hill. He and his wife Christine arrived home from the movies to find 20 metre flames leaping from the family's underinsured home. It was destroyed. He felt like a failure. He watched on as his future disintegrated before his eyes, everything gone except for debt. But the decisions Sir Michael Hill made that night led him to reinvent himself and build a jewellery empire. Well, now he finds himself having to reimagine his business all over again. Sir Michael is with me now from his golf course in Queenstown. Sir Michael, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, and thank you for having me on the programme. Do you remember, Michael, how you felt that evening as you watched the house burn? Uh, it's, it's very clear on my mind. Um, we, we, we got to the house fire. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Sir Michael Hill, a little later on the programme, compliance with the lockdown has been stunningly successful in New Zealand. But in this democracy, we are all free spirits. We ask if we can guarantee the same level of cooperation over the next few weeks. But live next, an industry in a fight for survival. Today they found out anything like business as usual is at least three more weeks away. The head of Hospitality New Zealand joins me next. This is Rebuilding Paradise with me, Paul Henry. Thanks for joining us. When the show was announced last week, I'm told it was greeted with great excitement on the Twitter. The final sign of Armageddon, Paul Henry returns, said one. Mandy said, Jesus, what did we do to deserve bloody Paul Henry again? Then there was, won't be watching that prick. And finally, out of a swathe of these things, my award tonight, if there were one, would go to Daisy, who said, Siri... Is Paul Henry one of the four horsemen? Um, now, the problem, Daisy, of course, is that you've made a punctuation error and there's no question mark, and so we can't possibly give you a prize. Um, but it is a question, and the answer, of course, clearly, Daisy, is yes. A big decision today from the government, an end point for lockdown. Those who were hopeful for Wednesday must surely be a little disappointed. So how long is it before we get out of level three? It looks like quite a long time. But as you can see, the clock is ticking in at least the right direction. Seven days, two hours, 11 minutes, and what have you. That lockdown extension may only be five days extra, but for many in a sector on its knees, it'll be the final straw. Coupled with dwindling business uh, since the borders started to close in New Zealand, this delay... So they're getting their barista to become the driver. So they are innovating, but they, we, what we really need is to open our doors. 
Yeah, absolutely. But now, of course, as you say, innovation is so important. Julie, thank you so much for joining us. Julie White, Hospitality New Zealand CEO. Live next on uh, the programme, already there are indications more New Zealanders by the day are finding it impossible to stay on the couch. Our placid, compliant nature is really being tested right at the moment. We ask an expert what happens next. up on News Hub late from level four to three, but how long until the move to level two? The under far boss of the NRL falls on his sword and the atrocious UK hacker that once seen cannot be unseen. Join us next. Of New Zealand is at risk. Because it matters, News Hub live at six on three. This is Rebuilding Paradise, thanks to our partners at Milford. Compliance with strict stay-at-home, don't-touch rules in New Zealand has been higher than in the UK, the US or Australia, and probably many other countries as well. As a result, we've been praised. We're one of the only countries globally on the cusp of eradicating the virus, but we're a free-spirited people. I'm a nudist. That's about as free-spirited as it comes. Lockdown fatigue is starting to bite. Professor Paul Spoonie has spent his life studying behaviour and joins me now from his home. Uh, Paul, thank, thank you very much for joining us. Are you on your doorstep outside? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I am. Beautiful doorstep. backdrop. Yes. Beautiful backdrop, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank I you. congratulate you thank for you. it. Uh, like no other time in the history of television, people's homes and offices have been on display to the nation. I mean, Paul had that wonderful step there outside his house. It has surprised me, though, how comparative re comparatively relaxed people seem to be regarding their own decor. For instance, Graham Henry. What was he thinking when he did this little piece to camera? New Zealand is coming out of his head, but, but Graham, you're not on your own. Let's have a look at some of the other more popular, oh, I won't say more popular people, but um, this guy's worth 10 million US dollars, American songwriter, charming Zoom type things. Do, do you imagine anyone would have heard anything Mark was thinking? Wouldn't they have just been sitting there thinking, hey, he's got a fish in his head? Um, there are some of my favourites anyway, and I'm sure you've seen some as well. Tomorrow evening, an interior designer will professionally critique a selection of your casually positioned knickknacks. If you've spotted an offensive interior or think you have one yourself, send us a snap on paul at paulhenry.co.nz. Tomorrow night on the show, the moral conundrum. Do we sacrifice health outcomes in the future to save lives Today, a medical ethicist will tell us whether or not it's just a numbers game at the end of the day. But before we go tonight, we've heard plenty about how the UK, the US and Australia are doing, but some countries remain a mystery, like Russia. Almost 43,000 cases with 361 deaths. That is a death rate in Russia of 0.8%, exactly the same as New Zealand. The Netherlands, almost 33,000 cases but 3,697 deaths. It has a mortality rate of 11.3%. It's virtually operating a herd immunity policy. But tonight belongs to Yemen. Come in, Yemen. One case and no deaths. Hopefully, that's how it stays. It's a country already under significant pressure. Alex is here in a tick with News Hub Late. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow night. night. Rebuilding your paradise. With a KiwiSaver manager that's invested in New Zealand, its businesses and its people. Milford, invested in you.